March 22. Moses blesses the people. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, gave to the people of Israel before his death. The Lord came from Mount Sinai and dawned upon us from Mount Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran and came from Meribah Kadesh with flaming fire at his right hand. Indeed, he loves his people. All his holy ones are in his hands. They follow in his steps and accept his teaching. Moses gave us the Lord's instruction, the special possession of the people of Israel. The Lord became king in Israel when the leaders of the people assembled, when the tribes of Israel gathered as one. Moses said this about the tribe of Reuben. Let the tribe of Reuben live and not die out, though they are few in number. Moses said this about the tribe of Judah. O Lord, hear the cry of Judah and bring them together as a people. Give them strength to defend their cause. Help them against their enemies. Moses said this about the tribe of Levi. O Lord, you have given your Thummim and Urim the sacred lots to your faithful servants, the Levites. You put them to the test at Massa and struggled with them at the waters of Meribah. The Levites obeyed your word and guarded your covenant. They were more loyal to you than to their own parents. They ignored their relatives and did not acknowledge their own children. They teach your regulations to Jacob. They give your instructions to Israel. They present incense before you and offer whole burnt offerings on the altar. Bless the ministry of the Levites, O Lord, and accept all the work of their hands. Hit their enemies where it hurts the most. Strike down their foes so they never rise again. Moses said this about the tribe of Benjamin. The people of Benjamin are loved by the Lord and live in safety beside him. He surrounds them continuously and preserves them from every harm. Moses said this about the tribes of Joseph. May their land be blessed by the Lord with the precious gift of dew from the heavens and water from beneath the earth, with the rich fruit that grows in the sun and the rich harvest produced each month, with the finest crops of the ancient mountains and the abundance from the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its bounty, and the favor of the one who appeared in the burning bush." May these blessings rest on Joseph's head, crowning the brow of the prince among his brothers. Joseph has the majesty of a young bull. He has the horns of a wild ox. He will gore distant nations, driving them to the ends of the earth. This is my blessing for the multitudes of Ephraim and the thousands of Manasseh. Moses said this about the tribes of Zebulun and Issachar. May the people of Zebulun prosper in their travels. May the people of Issachar prosper at home in their tents. They summon the people to the mountain to offer proper sacrifices there. They benefit from the riches of the sea and the hidden treasures in the sand. Moses said this about the tribe of Gad. Blessed is the one who enlarges Gad's territory. Gad is poised there like a lion to tear off an arm or a head. The people of Gad took the best land for themselves. A leader's share was assigned to them. When the leaders of the people were assembled, they carried out the Lord's justice and obeyed his regulations for Israel. Moses said this about the tribe of Dan. Dan is a lion's cub, leaping out from Bashan. Moses said this about the tribe of Naphtali. O Naphtali, you are rich in favor and full of the Lord's blessings. May you possess the west and the south. Moses said this about the tribe of Asher. May Asher be blessed above other sons. May he be esteemed by his brothers. May he bathe his feet in olive oil. May the bolts of your gates be of iron and bronze. May you be secure all your days. There is no one like the God of Israel. He rides across the heavens to help you, across the skies in majestic splendor. The eternal God is your refuge, and his everlasting arms are under you. He drives out the enemy before you. He cries out, Destroy them! So Israel will live in safety, prosperous Jacob in security, in a land of grain and new wine, while the heavens drop down dew. 
How blessed you are, O Israel! Who else is like you, a people saved by the Lord? He is your protecting shield and your triumphant sword. Your enemies will cringe before you, and you will stomp on their backs. The Death of Moses Then Moses went up to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab, but to this day no one knows the exact place. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyesight was clear, and he was as strong as ever. The people of Israel mourned for Moses on the plains of Moab for thirty days until the customary period of mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him, doing just as the Lord had commanded Moses. There has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The Lord sent him to perform all the miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. With mighty power, Moses performed terrifying acts in the sight of all Israel. The Lord's Charge to Joshua After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you, from the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north. From the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua's Charge to the Israelites Joshua then commanded the officers of Israel, Go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days you will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you. Then Joshua called together the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. He told them, Remember what Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. The Lord your God is giving you a place of rest. He has given you this land. Your wives, children, and livestock may remain here in the land Moses assigned to you, on the east side of the Jordan River. But your strong warriors, fully armed, must lead the other tribes across the Jordan to help them conquer their territory. Stay with them until the Lord gives them rest, as He has given you rest, and until they too possess the land the Lord your God is giving them. Only then may you return and settle here on the east side of the Jordan River in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, assigned to you. They answered Joshua, We will do whatever you command us, and we will go wherever you send us. We will obey you just as we obeyed Moses. And may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Anyone who rebels against your orders and does not obey your words and everything you command will be put to death. So be strong and courageous. 
Rahab protects the spies. Then Joshua secretly sent out two spies from the Israelite camp at Acacia Grove. He instructed them, scout out the land on the other side of the Jordan River, especially around Jericho. So the two men set out and came to the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there that night. But someone told the king of Jericho, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent orders to Rahab, Bring out the men who have come into your house, for they have come here to spy out the whole land. Rahab had hidden the two men, but she replied, Yes, the men were here earlier, but I didn't know where they were from. They left the town at dusk as the gates were about to close. I don't know where they went. If you hurry, you can probably catch up with them. Actually, she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them beneath bundles of flax she had laid out. So the king's men went looking for the spies along the road leading to the shallow crossings of the Jordan River. And as soon as the king's men had left, the gate of Jericho was shut. Before the spies went to sleep that night, Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all their families. We offer our own lives as a guarantee for your safety, the men agreed. If you don't betray us, we will keep our promise and be kind to you when the Lord gives us the land. Then, since Rahab's house was built into the town wall, she let them down by a rope through the window. Escape to the hill country, she told them. Hide there for three days from the men searching for you. Then, when they have returned, you can go on your way. Before they left, the men told her, We will be bound by the oath we have taken only if you follow these instructions. When we come into the land, you must leave this scarlet rope hanging from the window through which you let us down. And all your family members, your father, mother, brothers, and all your relatives, must be here inside the house. If they go out into the street and are killed, it will not be our fault. But if anyone lays a hand on people inside this house, we will accept the responsibility for their death. If you betray us, however, we are not bound by this oath in any way. I accept your terms, she replied, and she sent them on their way, leaving the scarlet rope hanging from the window. The spies went up into the hill country and stayed there three days. The men who were chasing them searched everywhere along the road, but they finally returned without success. Then the two spies came down from the hill country, crossed the Jordan River, and reported to Joshua all that had happened to them. The Lord has given us the whole land, they said, for all the people in the land are terrified of us.